Holy smokers, guys. Snapchat is down massively, massively after hours. So we got to talk about Snapchat. We got to look at these numbers that came out of Snapchat. And uh, we got to see about Snapchat here. I also want to talk a little bit about NVIDIA. NVIDIA, I'm sorry, I, you know, I don't think I pronounce it correctly all the time. It's NVIDIA. Uh, we got to look at their numbers. Their stock went up over $18 per share today. Snapchat's down like 24% after hours, just down massively. So I want to talk about both those, especially Snapchat, and kind of give my take and my opinion on it. And I wasn't even going to do this video, but I actually had a video plan that was going to come out it was kind of like more of a motivational video called like how to be great. I'll probably release that one tomorrow. And uh, so I want to talk about this for the people that bought into the Snapchat IPO, like my wife, my wife bought into the Snapchat IPO. And you can say, Jeremy, why didn't you talk her out of buying in the Snapchat IPO? Well, my wife's a certain type of investor. She'll buy a stock and plan on holding that stock for the next five, 10 years. She's not, she doesn't really care about the fluctuations. She was up uh, quite a bit on her position as of today. As of today, she could have sold out, but she doesn't care. She's like, I'm just gonna hold this stock for the next five to 10 years. And whatever happens, happens, you know, from there, I believe in this for the long term. So that's why I didn't talk her out of it, even though investors like myself that are more, you know, uh, been in the game longer, we don't really mess with IPOs unless maybe you're a trader, then maybe you mess with IPOs. But a lot of us, you know, more value type investors, we don't mess with IPOs because whenever a company goes public, they're not going to sell that company for a discount or for cheap because management wants to get top dollar for that. The investment banks want to get top dollar for that company. So it doesn't mean you can't make money. I mean, we've seen stocks like a GoPro go from $24 a share to four months after it IPO, 90 plus dollars. We've seen companies like Fitbit skyrocket. We've seen, I know we give you a list of companies that went up huge after the IPOs. It's just not for me because my, my value side doesn't, you know, agree with it. But I do like Snapchat a lot and we got to talk about Snapchat. So first off, we got to do a history lesson here. Let's look back at this company that is so respected now named Facebook. They went public around $38 per share, right? This company less than, I would say about four months later, you look at this chart here in August of 2012, four months after it IPO, where was that stock? That stock was around an $18 stock. Facebook stock dropped around 50%, 50%. In order for Snapchat to have this type of performance, Snapchat IPO to $17 per share. So Snapchat would have to go down to $9.50 per share to have the same type of performance that Facebook did. I don't know if Snapchat will or anything like that, but just, just for reference here, this Facebook company that's so respected now, that is like, you know, the Wall Street darling. This was a stock that was an $18 stock shortly after it IPO that was down 50%, guys. I bought Facebook shares, as I'm gonna show you now on the screen. I actually looked back at my account to see, you know, um, what, what price I had bought them at. I bought Facebook shares at $18.96 per share. I sold them a little over $20 a few days later. So no matter what decision you make it out there and investing just be glad you're not the the dumbest smart guy in the room or the smartest dumb guy like I am I bought shares of Facebook at $18.96 and sold them at 20 something dollars guys how ridiculous was that and you know why I sold them because my my value side of me even though I believe so much in the company for the long term, my value side said that's a really high PE, which it had at that time. And I said, because of that really high PE, I need to go into another stock. And I did, I made some great you know, investments at that time, so I still made money. But regardless, I, I would have been better off just staying in Facebook stock and holding that stock and having my shares worth 150 plus dollars, which is what they would be worth right now, guys. So, you know, I just want to give you that history lesson because I know a lot of you guys are newer investors out there and you, you, you're you kind of just getting in the game. You don't know all this stuff that's happened in the past. Like I've actually been buying stocks and selling stocks like in these time periods, guys. So first off, let's look at Snapchat here. Um, as of the screenshot, they were down 22%. Uh, most recently, I just looked and I think it was down almost 20 24%, but as of doing the screenshot down 22% down huge, we see how volatile it's been since it came public. I mean, a couple days after it went public, it was a $27 stock. Then, it, you know, skyrocketed down to, you know, uh, around $21, then up to around $23, then all the way down to around a, a $19, $18 range, then all the way back up to about $23. We see this stock is just extremely volatile, which is exactly what I said it would be an extremely volatile stock, you know, because um, it's, it's such a hyped stock. 
that it's just gonna it's just gonna be all over the place. Now let's look at the actual numbers they came out with here. So revenue, right off the bat, um, they missed their expectations, which is kind of surprising. I mean, I'm very surprised about that, but they still did some amazing numbers here. You look at 2016, they did 38.7 million dollars in revenue. This year, for this quarter they just reported, they did 149 million dollars in revenue. That's 286 percent revenue growth. Absolutely amazing there. Now adjust to EBITDA, I'll look at the way that went down. Now, by the way, why don't we look at net loss because over $2 billion was basically um, stock compensation that was given out there because of uh, the IPO. So, you know, every company's net loss is usually huge right after the IPO and then it normalizes. Um, adjust the EBITDA, I like it to look at here. They are losing twice as much money basically as they were before. Adjust the EBITDA of $188 million loss versus 93. So, and then the last thing I want to point your attention to here is the Cash and cash equivalents is, has gone up massively because of the IPO. They raised over $2 billion in that IPO. So basically now they have over $3.2 billion in cash and marketable securities, making them a very strong balance sheet type company because they don't even have any long-term debt, guys. So balance sheet's phenomenal. Revenue growth is phenomenal, but it's not quite. They just barely missed their own expectations and analyst expectations. And then on top of that, they're losing more money than ever at the moment. So, you know, and the revenue growth they have is phenomenal right now. However, we've seen some great revenue growth out of some of these social media companies like a Twitter, like a Facebook, some of these companies in their early days because they, they build the platform up with people and the advertisers start coming after the, those people are there and it's like a, you know, a catch-up effect and so the the amounts of revenue go up it's just extreme guys that's what we have going on with snapchat here some other nice numbers i saw out of snapchat here that um are not necessarily revenue type numbers so daily active users which i think is the most important thing when looking at a social media company Daily active users grew from 122 million in Q1 2016 to 166 million in Q1 2017, an increase of 36% year over year. Daily active users increased 5% quarter of a quarter from 158 million in Q4 2016. So right there guys, like I said, daily active users for me is the most important thing when judging a social media company. Facebook's kind of moved to this, this thing where they talk more about monthly active users. Monthly active users, I don't really like to pay attention as much because that just means somebody had to log into their account, whatever their social media, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, whatever, they had to log in just once in a month. Daily active users is people logging in every single day guys i think that's way more powerful than than a monthly active user number because you know let's look at this channel would i rather have somebody that watches a video once a month or someone that watches a video every single day it comes out obviously the one that's watching a video every single day it comes out is much more powerful than the one that watches a video once a month guys so i look at daily active users and i see phenomenal growth out of snapchat and we don't see any sign of this slowing down anytime soon, guys. So phenomenal numbers out of them. They're growing very nicely. We see the revenues going up massively, but mainly the daily active users. And that number needs to keep increasing dramatically over the next year or two to really um, get this to a place where the, they have, you know, 300 million, 400 million, 500 million users on the platform. Now, people might look at that and say, what, you know, Facebook, for instance, has like over a billion daily active users. I think the recent estimate is somewhere around 1.2, 1.3 billion. That's all the Facebook platforms. 1.2, 1.3 billion daily active users. Snapchat only has 166 million right now. That's fine and dandy, but you're talking about apples to oranges. Facebook is a company that has a valuation of $430 billion or something. Snapchat, as of tomorrow, will have a valuation of around $24 billion. So we're talking like 20 times less valuable than a Facebook. So comparing these two and saying, well, Snapchat's not as big is not really like an argument to be made because Facebook has such a bigger valuation, guys. So, and obviously Facebook's uh, extremely profitable now. Snapchat's got to still prove, you know, it's not going to be this year they're going to be able to prove that. Maybe next year or the following year that they can get to this point of profitability because there was a time Facebook wasn't profitable. So, you know, Snapchat's got to prove that it can get to that point. Some other interesting uh, things that caught my eye here. Average revenue per user was 90 cents in Q1 2017, an increase of 181% over the Q1 2016 
average revenue per user ARPU, which was 32 cents. Um, and then also hosting costs per user, per daily active user. Hosting costs per daily active user was 60 cents in Q1 2017 compared to 52 cents in Q1 2016, which basically means the, the company is spending more money to basically, I guess you could say more people are posting more stuff, right? When somebody posts a message, when I post a message on Snapchat, the more I post, the more storage Snapchat has to have so they can do that. And then you, you times that by hundreds of millions, well, 166 million people. If they're posting more, that means Snapchat needs more storage in the cloud and whatnot to store all that stuff, right? So, which then means it, their, their cost increases. So, you know, basically the way they catch up with that is just making sure the revenue just keeps skyrocketing the way it is. And then eventually they get to a point where the revenue per user is coming in so strong that the amount of, it doesn't matter really how much people are posting. If they're posting 10 times a day or 20 times a day, the amount of revenue is so high, it really doesn't matter in the end. So that's where Snapchat's got to get to. And just my closing thoughts before we get to NVIDIA on Snapchat. It's a company I'm going to be seriously considering buying at this point in time, now that it's down 25% after hours in that $17 range. I have not made my decision if I will absolutely buy or will not buy. My issue with Snapchat is, okay, I believe in it extremely, I believe in, I believe in the story long term. It's the same way I believed in the Facebook story, in the Amazon story, in the Tesla story. I believe in Snapchat, absolutely, for the long term, but the value side of me, the Warren Buffett side says, Jeremy, don't mess with that. And, and it's a conflicting thing, and, and it pisses me off, and it's so conflicting because I missed out on massive gains with a company like Tesla. I was looking at Tesla in $30, and I saw the future for the company. I was looking at those shares, and I was seriously thinking about buying them. This was probably, I would say, five years ago-ish. The company was trading at $30-something a share. Now it's over $300, by the way, so it's basically up 10 times. And, and I saw the f future for Tesla, and I said, I don't want to buy it because they're losing massive amounts of money and this and that and the value just wasn't there. Even now, Tesla's still super unprofitable, so even now, I can't even say the value is there, even though I believe so much in the future. Same thing with Amazon. Amazon traded at a ridiculous PE, and just as a few years ago, when I was seriously looking at Amazon, this was like three years ago, they were actually made, losing money at that point in time. And so, although I believe so much in the company, the value side of me said, no, Jeremy, you cannot buy that Amazon. So. I don't know what I'm going to do with Snapchat, but I'm seriously thinking about buying it and just being one of those stocks that I just throw over there and put money in it and just don't pay attention to it for a few years and just because I believe in the future. I wish I would have done that with Facebook because look where Facebook's gone since I bought it. I mean, since I sold it, I sold it at 20 something dollars as I showed you guys on the screen and now it's at $150, all because of the value proposition there. So we'll see what happens there, guys. NVIDIA, this stock went up over eight dollars per share today over eighteen dollars absolutely phenomenal if we look at the the basically two-year chart on this look at the past year and a half where this stock has gone there's a stock trading at 25 ish dollars and now it's trading at over a hundred and twenty dollars per share guys up ridiculous amounts up there guys so in video their stock jumped huge as we know over $18 per share the company reported 70 79 cents of EPS on 1.94 billion dollars of revenue beating consensus of 66 cents EPS on 1.91 billion on revenue uh, more importantly in Nvidia's NVIDIA's, I hope I pronounced that right, revenue was up 48% from a year ago, while Gap EPS was up 126%. Right off the bat there, you see revenue just slightly beat. That's a you know a small beat on the revenue, but the EPS coming in at 79 cents versus a 66 cent expect expectation, huge beat, guys, huge beat. And then we look at this, NVIDIA was particularly bullish on its data center GPU business as its prospects in uh, as well as its prospects in artificial intelligence, the AI revolution is moving fast and continuing to accelerate. CEO Jensen Hong said in a statement, our data center GPU computing business nearly tripled, tripled from last year as more of the world's computer scientists engage deep learning. One industry after another is awakening the power of GPU, deep learning, and AI, the most important technology force of our time. So basically, NVIDIA is uh, NVIDIA's involved in a lot of businesses, if you know anything about NVIDIA, but 
the AI, the artificial intelligence, it's looking as of right now, if I had to bet which company is gonna win the artificial intelligence game, I would have to say Nvidia is. I see no one out there doing the kind of things Nvidia is doing and actually implementing these things already, guys. So very exciting stuff out of that company. I want to know if you're, I know a lot of AMD shareholders watch this channel. I'm pretty sure a few NVIDIA shareholders watch this. I want to know if you're an AMD shareholder, why you're, why you're not buying NVIDIA, why you believe in AMD more than NVIDIA, or vice versa. If you own NVIDIA and you don't own AMD, why do you believe in NVIDIA more than AMD? I would love to hear your guys' opinion in that comment section, why you believe in ABC stock versus this stock, or maybe you own them both. And if you do own them both, why do you own both AMD and Nvidia? I would love to hear from you guys. I just want to hear the whole perspective on those stocks because I know there are two stocks that are up massively within the last year, year and a half, and they're two stocks that have you know attracted a ton of retail investors. And I just want to see you know the vision from you, your guys' standpoint on why you own one stock versus the other, or if you own them both, guys. So I would love to hear that in the comment section. Other than that. I don't have much else to say, so you know what guys, have a great day.